What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Veterans Minimum, the number one sports betting vibe on the internet. I'm your host, Nick Dayas, at Nick Dayas 10, as we can find me. All things Veterans Minimum are at Veterans Minimum. My guest to the right, always my co-host, I should say, Josh Williams. What's good? Man, everything's good, man. You, 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 you got a twinkle in your eye today. You had a good day today. It's been a good day, man. <laughs> it's, it's been a really good day. We got more surprises in the studio right now. My man, Bill Krakenberger, is in the building. I had him scheduled to come on this show. We booked this in advance. And then also the other gentleman... Dude, I'm a big fan of yours. I read your book. I'm not a reader, so I'm not going to come off as someone that reads a lot. I'm not a reader either. But but your it. book, uh, Sharp Analysis, Warren Sharp is in the building. I read that every year, man. You yeah. you get you well, get my money. Coming over to dinner, and, and I and I just threw him on air with us, figuring maybe you might know him. He has a uh, that that book every year. My God, isn't that really great? I mean, he, you know how, many, how long he works on that, Warren? Two months? No, no more. Four four to five months. Four yeah. to five months works on a book. To get that out every year, uh, just chock full of information. Yeah, you have an annual book, like a sports yeah, it's a, betting it's book. A, it's a preview. Yeah, it comes out. I work on it. I basically start. Um, I give myself three to four weeks to take a breath after the season, and then I start researching, writing, and it comes out uh, like right before the Fourth of July. Pretty nice. much, and uh, previews the entire season. Talks about what happened last year. Tries to understand why certain teams met or failed to meet expectations, what they did wrong, what's changing this year, new coaches, new yeah. players, who they drafted, what the outlook is for that team, what the Vegas projections are, and what I think is going to happen with them. So it's, I mean, I put a lot of work into it and a lot of pressure on myself to share information. I'm always looking to share information that other people aren't discussing already. If you're, if you're just sharing the same stuff everybody already is talking about, then, you know, there's no point in doing anything. So I'm trying to come up with different angles. Sharp analysis. All Sharp right. football analysis, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to, <laughs> have to uh, talk some more to Mr. Warren after this. And we haven't been together. By the way, I, I, I talk to Warren every single day, on, about every single day during the football season on the phone. But we haven't been together since we filmed the Showtime show Action, which was a four-part docuseries on Showtime back uh, about four years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, matter of fact, want to know something? It's gonna be. It's. I think it's five years ago. Really? Yeah, that was a long time ago. But yet we talk all the time. So I always want to get his input. Um, one of the best guys on totals, NFL totals. I I discovered you on that show, and because of you, I I fold my money a certain way now because of what you said in that show. Yeah, you got to do that when you're traveling. Yeah, yeah, it's a thousand dollars each way. Yeah, I oh. mean, I'm I'm not that high. No, no, you have But but <laughs> I when am, I'm traveling, I I take it's it's real simple. You know, do you know what I do with the thousand? Yeah, yeah, you do. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I know you don't carry money. I, you're like one of those guys that carry credit cards, and you want to like go and get pay ten dollar fees at the ATM. That's so, me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> A thousand dollars, it's just easy to carry ten thousand dollar packs without having but I don't want to come off like a show off or nothing. I'm I, no 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 so this that's is not this something is, I really talk about normally. But since you mentioned it, yeah. Um it's just easier to carry money, even whatever it is. You could just take ten bills, fold it up one way, take ten, fold the other way, and other way, other way, other way. Ten ten of them, and then put two rubber bands that way and two rubber bands that way. It looks like a Kit Kat bar, ten thousand packs, a ten thousand dollar strap. Just it's just easier to bet like that. I can reach in and get out. How many? I know if I bet in three thousand on something, take out three little bands. You know, it's, it's just a little bit easier to carry. And um, once you see it, you'll be like, "Oh my God, how can I not carry?" And you'll yeah, do that when yeah, you have some money. Yeah, yeah. It's just easier to carry for sure. How, yeah. for, so from when you guys filmed that documentary, um, and it was about like sports betting, obviously, and just like where it's going, where where it was headed to. How much change have you seen since then to now? Tons of change. Tons of change. You know, I'm a real blunt guy. I'm a New Yorker, so I'm real blunt. From where? Autom the Bronx. Okay, Queens. Automatically, people aren't going to care for what I have to say, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm going to tell it like it is. because You know why? I'm, a, I'm giant on responsible gambling. I'm giant knowing where I came from. You know, uh, I'm giant on helping people and trying to help let them learn. The, the media space, the sports betting media space, has so many frauds, charlatans, people that are just... 
total BS. There's so many people out there that talk so much BS, and yet a lot of them don't even bet, and mm. a lot of them don't even win. Most don't win. I don't know anyone that wins. You know what I mean, long term. So I have been talking in this space for years, um, and, and and then the sports betting became fashionable. You know, it's like. And now, oh, it's all fashion. We go to Yankee Stadium, left field, center field, right field. Little kids, 10 years old. Daddy, what's that? What's that? What's that? And, and you know, their minds like sponges. So, you know, I, I am always talking about uh, me being a kid growing up. I grew up on the Jersey Shore, actually. We used to go down from at nine years old, down from the city, down to the Jersey Shore. And I actually grew up on the Jersey Shore um, at a boardwalk. And we were gamblers. I grew up, my mother's family was Italian from the Bronx. I mean, they gambled, and they're all degenerates. <laughs> Not, nothing to do with my – I love my family, but my all my Italian uncles and stuff, they corrupted my poor father from West Virginia who was a hunter. and You know, he was a country boy, grew up on a farm, totally corrupted my father. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because my family was the same way. Like oh, my, yeah. De degenerate gamblers. Degenerates. No, yeah, yeah. Even, even me, I was a little degen. I lost a lot of money before I started to win. Um, you know, you try to you grow up with your with your buddies and stuff, and we're all pitching quarters behind the post office, flipping baseball cards. Just you know, that was the it was action for us all the time. And uh, like I said, I was a sucker, I was a loser. But it took my cousin, my cousin Anthony, very smart guy. Um, for, he went to Fordham, which is right there in the Bronx. Then he went on to a, a technical school, genius, very wealthy today. He taught me from a young age how to count cards, stick a deck of cards. And you know, I'm 11 years old. I'm, I'm watching him run deck de decks down, and I'm like, what is that about? And, uh, you know, counting cards, which is, by the way, counting cards, everyone says it's so hard to do. You can learn 90% of what I know in four hours of the Internet, 90%. It's much simpler than you think. You know, people say, oh, my God, counting cards, you must be so smart. So smart. I barely graduated 12th grade. Uh, you know, like, it, you just have to know that a 10 and a 3 equals 0. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like, the way I, I'll do, sir, I do a, a more advanced count now, but... Threes, fours, fives, sixes, and sevens are plus one. Tens and aces minus one. It's so simple just to look at that. the other cards are neutral. But um, so it's pretty simple, but the casinos frown on it big time. I can walk into any casino. You guys pick the casino. I'll go with you and stand behind you, and I'll just tap you when you should bet five times more your original bet. I'll get you thrown out by the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's actually fun doing that. Yeah. People are like, oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe that you can get someone thrown out of a casino. And when I say thrown out, they're very friendly. They come over and say, right, sir, yeah, yeah. you know what? You're not welcome to play blackjack. You can play anything else you want. You could be a sucker at anything else you want to be, but you can't play blackjack. So um, I love the win here. I play here. I don't play blackjack here, but I play. They give me a really good deal here every week. Uh, I do play. And uh, I just stay away from the blackjack tables. I'm not allowed to play blackjack. Yeah. Not only here, almost everywhere in town. So it's just um, I, it's not really something I actually even am proud of. I wish I didn't get hurt me, actually, because I'll get deals on other things, playing video poker promotions, playing walking money, put so much money up, you get a deal. And it hurts me because of that Griffin. It was called Griffin Investigations. The Griffin book um, has photos of me like I'm a, you know, all I'm doing is using my brain. By the way, you're not cheating when you're counting cards. You're just using your brain, just like we use our brains to bet sports. It's the same reason why I've been thrown out of thousands and thousands of bookmakers. And, um, you know, even now, there's not many apps I can play. I'm not allowed to play, like, DraftKings, FanDuel, ESPN. Um, ESPN just opened. I know it did. I know it did. Already they got rid of you? Ten, ten dollars. <laughs> well, I say not allowed to play. They limit you to ten grocery dollars. Ten bucks. So, um, but, but. You know what? I, I, they have a business and a model. I understand. I'm allowed to play at the counter. I can go. I fly. I fly right from Vegas. I fly right into Hartford, and I go to Mohegan Sun, and I go to DraftKings. Uh, at, I'm sorry, Mohegan Sun's FanDuel and DraftKings at Foxwoods. At the counter, they take thousand dollar bets from me, and sometimes they'll take two thousand dollar props from me too. So they do take bets there for me. I have to give them a lot of credit for that. Um, if I was on the other side of the counter. I would just do, do things a little bit differently. I would take bets from the sharp guys. I would just limit them. I'd give them a limit, and I'd actually overmove whatever I bet to put the customer base on the mm. other side of that, if you say I win. Mm. So uh, I think Warren's just running into that, too. If this was your first year. I don't want to throw in any of it because we have sponsors, too. We do shows. We're not talking about our sponsors, and we're not even talking about the industry. Like We're not really downing them for doing that. If I worked there, I would limit people, too, but I would definitely take a bet. But I think Warren's even seen that with his totals this year, with proposition bets especially. But my own opinion, and I haven't really talked to you about this ever. 
don't think I've ever, I'm, you're going to hear it cold here. So I hope you, I hope uh, you don't mind. I hope you answer right. <laughs> um, so I mean, Warren and I are so different. Like I'm a street knock around guy. Warren's all college professor. You got a bow tie on today? <laughs> he had a bow tie on Showtime. If you think about it, watch it again. A little bow tie on. Class, class personified. I always uh, uh, make fun of him. I love it. I love that he allows me to do that. But, um, you know, talking about what, what I do prop-wise, too, I think proposition bets, I know for a fact, it was, it was more of a winning formula years ago before the DraftKings and the FanDuel's came to the States. And you want to know why? Think about this. Sunday, Monday, Thursday Night Football. That was the three games of the week. Three days of the week they had uh, NFL player props. You know when the props came up for those games? The day, day of. of the game. That's right. Yeah. That's Six right. hours before the game, props came up. Now they come up Sunday night, a week before the games. Yeah. So they come up Sunday night for small limits. And um, what happens is, literally, they have $100 limits on them on Sunday nights. And there are certain groups that will iron them out and bet them for $100. dollars So therefore, someone like me that was getting $1,000 limits on you know day of the game, by the time it comes, there's not, I don't have a lot of plays to make. I was actually surprised. I went to the Westgate the other night, and uh, it was three different guys in there that were interviewing me. And I said, uh, guys, I'll have th that we're waiting now. This is the super book. Giant book comes up, $2,000 limits. You line up for the lottery. You line up for the draft line. I'm sorry, the lottery line. So you're lining up, hoping to get to the front of the line for these props that are going to come up at 5 p.m. So I said, listen, I'll probably get three or four bets in. and that, That'll be because everything's kind of ironed out. I was shocked. I actually got 16 bets in. So I actually made 16 limit bets, and I went up there and bet a couple more. I rebet them. So I actually bet a lot more money than I thought I was going to bet in there. Warren, you, um, he was talking just now about, like, the totals moving, and a lot of that had to do with you and, like, your influence with this book that you also do and all the work that you've done. How much has your analysis changed over the years to get more of a betting influence into your breakdowns, or is that not a thing? Uh. You know, actually, it's gone a little bit the opposite direction. Okay. Um, I've been getting more data into the model and more data into my analysis as that data has become a little bit more readily available. Now, also, the amount of money that I invest into it has grown. So, you know, 10 years ago, I wasn't ponying up this, but now it's like 30 to 40K of just data that I'm getting, buying access to, so that then I can have more information. Now, I use it for multiple purposes, not just sports betting. I use it for, and, and not just props either, but uh, for work that I'm doing for some coaches and that sort of thing. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good investment that is well worth it for me, um, but for me, having the data has be, has allowed the betting to become a lot broader. I can look at more things. I can focus on which things that I believe are most actionable from a data perspective. And it's easier to kind of identify um, certain things that I would be looking at to bet, especially in the props market. You got something? Yeah, yeah. No, I was, I was going to ask both of you guys. So in the last, you know, four or five years, this this goes forever because you know I'm I'm the resident, five ten he's, twenty. Bill, he's not 20. like us. He's no, not no, a no, 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 no. I don't DJ. Oh, you're look, smart. Uh, look, <laughs> I'll bet and I'll be like. I mean, I used to be when I was a kid. When I was fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. I, I, I bet and uh, you know I get I get a couple hundred. I'm like, cash me out. Oh, That's wow. a bill. I'll go, I'll go. Hit I'll go. I'll go pay. Go pay a bill off. But um, the last four or five years, you know, sports betting has changed dramatically. You know what I mean? Like now we talk about ESPN having a betting app now and like things like that. Did you guys see that coming with, you know, with FanDuel becoming so popular and DraftKings becoming so popular? If you only now the knew apps, the money they make yeah. every month, you would say no way. Even us that are schooled in the business, yeah. we have the pulse of the business, the heartbeat. We know what's going on. You wouldn't believe the money these companies are making. How do you think they afford to, you know, pay these guys? They just paid LeBron. I mean, you know, these guys aren't getting 200000 a year. They're getting millions. Yeah. So uh, you see Jamie Foxx out there. He, he sponsors uh, I mean, BetMGM. MG, yeah. Bet yep. These companies are, are, are making lots of – I never – I really didn't have an idea that this was going to be as big as it is. It, it, it really is. It's much bigger. Put it this way. Some people don't know this, especially people home listening. They have no idea. They think Vegas is a sports betting capital. <laughs> Not even close. 
New Jersey does more volume than Vegas. Oh, yeah. Wow. And New York does double yeah. than Vegas. New York's the sports betting capital of the United States. I'm glad New you, York does double the volume than Vegas does. I'm glad you bring that up because I moved here about a year and a half ago, and I would call my family back home in New York and ask them to put bets in for me. And they would be blown away that I would tell them, <laughs> you know, they're like, you live in Vegas. I'm like, it's the worst place to bet. No, because because you had access to DraftKings and FanDuel. Yeah. Where they put up a hundred, you know, I shouldn't say a hundred, a thousand props every any given, you know, the primetime games are a thousand props. The the regular games were three hundred props. Just every single game on Sunday. So you're you're getting a place that's getting a thousand proposition bets on like the Super Bowl. Whereas here I have one spot that puts up six hundred, which is great. But I'll even use let let me let's not use a Super Bowl. It's once a year. Just any given Sunday. Any given Sunday, maybe they'll put up 40 props, 50 yeah. props. Maybe um, Westgate puts up about 100 because they, they put up like 5 or 10 on every game. So they'll put up 100. But FanDuel and DraftKings, they'll have 1,000 up on each, on each, game, on each uh, Sunday. So they'll have 10 times as much, much more options, which, let me be honest, let me be blunt, that means there's a chance for much more inefficiencies in the market mm. because you just can't get everything right. Yeah. And I'll I'll tell tell you something I haven't told nobody yet. So I'm gonna break it here. You two, listen. To, you won't be what happened the other night. So the other night, they put up the wrong lines at one of the sports books. Will Kansas City have to lead in the first first half? Will uh, San Fran have to come well, back and win them? the game? What should that be about? Nothing big. Well, they fl they flipped it the wrong no, way. No, it should be like it plus, should be like two plus. point uh, whatever. It was like two point seven to one or whatever. Well, that's exactly what happened. It's, it's supposed to be like three to one or four to one. They put a zero on the end, so it was twenty-seven to one. All you have to have is a three nothing Kansas City leader, thirteen ten, and to San Fran win the game, twenty-seven to one. So sure enough, someone went up and bet it for two thousand each. They had both ways at twenty-seven to one, so two thousand to win fifty-four thousand. It's a great bet. It's sick. Just wow. think about that. You know, one's winning by a field goal, the other one wins the game by a field goal. I mean, it, it easily could happen. Every Sunday it happens. So that now that's taking advantage of something where. You know, it matters which sports book is has that up. I'm not putting nothing past me. I've had sports books throw me out for stupid things that I get mad about. But a, a big sports book that I'm good with, like over here, the win. I want to just tell you something, guys. I told you before on the phone how much they take on props. Yeah. This is the number one sports book for me. Doug Castaneda runs an unbelievable sports book. They are taking thousands and thousands from me on proposition bets. They're taking more here than anywhere in the city right now. Imagine that. Imagine you got big, you know, Circa and, you know, Westgate and William Hill and MG. They're taking more money on proposition bets here than, than anywhere in town. For At least for me. And I think that from the public, you know. Yeah, There's definitely. a lot of, there's a, there'll be a lot of money coming in. Right now, I haven't even bet. I probably bet. I'm going to say I bet about 20 to 25% of my props. 75% and I'm going to bet Saturday or Sunday. Saturday or Sunday is going to be insane. And why is that? Early in the week, you bet your overs. overs. Yep. Later in the week, after the public money comes in, and I know public money is small, $25, $50, $100, $100, but in volume, a sports book having, you know, everyone betting Mahomes over, everyone betting Kelsey over, everyone bet. I mean, these guys are all getting bet on the over. It's not fun to go there, come into Vegas, fly all the way here and root for no scoring, root, root against <laughs> all the players to get yards, you know? So in volume, it equals a lot. And uh, I'll be betting, I'll be the guy that jumps in there and bets the unders on uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Last Super Bowl, I didn't win. I broke about even. Mm. I can't win when they're scoring. What did they score? 70 30 points. 35. Yeah. 73 points. Yeah. I can't win on a 73 point Super Bowl. If it happens again, I'll, I'll lose again. And like I said, last year I broke about even. But uh, this year I do have a side, though. And I'm pretty deep on the side, too. I'm, you know, I, I need Kansas City to win for a future. I need Kansas City to win. I, as soon as the line opened, you know, people don't know it. Um, you know what this line opened at, right? Yeah. People don't realize that everyone, every show I'm doing, they say, oh, it opened to two or two and a half, right? No, no, it opened to three. I took the three. Yep. I, I got three plus 22. I, it actually opened to three at, at the, the two sports books that opened the line. They opened at three. It was only there for, I don't know, 45 seconds, a minute. But I was right on my Don Best screen. You know, that, that's what I do. So um, I have Kansas City. I am not getting off. I'm not middling. I'm not scalping. I, I you know, I, I did that. I did use to, I used to do that back in the '90s when I started. That's how I built the bankroll. I only started this thing with a thousand dollars. I mean, really, thousand um, bucks and five hundred bucks to two sports books. They match my deposits. 
to make it a thousand and a thousand instead of five hundred, five hundred. And uh, just since the then, it's just been the... running since then like crazy. Yeah, Damn. yeah. Well, bonuses were a big part. By yeah. the way, bonuses were such a big part of my original the bankroll. I, I made a lot of money sending like five thousand to someplace, and they give you ten thousand. Oh yeah, you got to roll it over ten times. So we're gonna bet anyway. Right, right. And let me tell you something. I guess I could talk about it now because um, it's not there anymore. When the DraftKings and FanDuel's came to this country, the bonuses were stupid. Stupid. I'm glad that you're bringing this up because oh, back in New it. York, when they got passed in New York and it got legal over there, we were calling it, my, my buddies yeah, and I, for, the... For the 5000 Yeah, the sportsbook stimulus checks. Yeah. Every single app, they were yeah. giving you all these sign-up bonuses, Caesars reload gave, bonuses. Caesars gave you 5000 Everywhere, How about yeah. Caesars? Even if you had an account out here, even if you had an account in Jersey, Caesars gave you a $5,000 sign-up bonus. Yeah. And, and, totally they gave you, and they gave you $300 just for making an account. Just this is not even, you know, matching or putting anything. It was it's crazy. unbelievable. The he, sportsbook he, stimulus He checks. always talks about uh, this. It was, they were giving money away. Warren, yeah. it was a great time. Well, the, the funny part is people in those states were just desperate to get an account. They were they would have maybe even paid to get the account. Like, you're, <laughs> I could get, yeah. let, me, let me pay to get an account so I can bet on all these props. Some of those people actually would have gone for that. And instead, they were giving away dimes for no reason. I mean, dimes? Ready? I want to tell you what DraftKings gave me. That's all right. John Avello might get mad now because he doesn't know. I'm, but they offered it to me. I had one of their <laughs> hosts call me up. He said, put 50000 in, and I'll give you 25000 extra. Mm. I put $50,000 in. And by the way, boy, did they vet me. Oh, my God. That's good. I like that New Jersey is so tough on responsible gambling, though. They went and looked at my bank account. Where's this money coming from? Where does it? Mm. They vetted me. They they really did vet me. Um, so, but yeah, I put fifty in and I started out with a balance of seventy five. I'll be real blunt. You can't give me a bonus. I'm gonna win anyway. You can't <laughs> give me a bonus. You know, um, they had a really good deal in the beginning, and and it was uh, it was very and not just them. Fanduel had same the same type of bonuses. Fanduel was put fifty up, you get twenty percent bonus. 50 max, you get 10,000. That's real money, though. Yeah. It's not a free bet. It was It was real money. They stopped doing those acquisition costs. That's done. Now they're paying the celebrities uh, for it, and they're giving people at home $200 or whatever. You know, bet five, every every couple of weeks, we get the email to go and make yeah. a deposit. And well, they that, see, you. I don't get, of course, they would never give me that, but that's a great thing. Though. At least you're giving you extra money. You know what I mean? Yeah, they they and and that's why I think they're the most popular ones too because yeah. they're giving it back to the the consumer too. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, yeah, no, and they, they only do. give it to people that you know end up losing money. Of course, they're not going to give it to someone like you because yeah, that wouldn't you're, be the, the most optimal. You're yeah. gonna you're gonna do something with yeah. that money. <laughs> but what these what these companies don't realize? Again, I'm being real blunt. I'm gonna beard it anyway. I'm gonna find a, a Nick. I'm gonna find some. I'm, I'm gonna find you guys, and I'm gonna say, hey, you want some of the best information in the world? We might only last for a month. You're going to get a bonus. It's going to cost them the bonus. Yeah. They're not going to know who I am. They're not going to know it's Bill Krakenberger and not Nick. And the, You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm going to go in anyway. I'll be real blunt. They don't like me saying that. I'm going to play. I'm going to get you anyway. So take my bets. Warren, I got a question for you when it comes to the football analysis and everything that you do. How, year to year, how much turnaround do you have in the sense of last year, teams throwing on first down was the most optimal for them to generate offense. And then maybe next year it's not. Like what kind of changes do you see when you're gathering your information? Well, there there are staples that I do not think will change. Some things are going to be consistent. The rules and the way the rules are enforced, as long as those things don't change, there's going to be certain aspects that are generally going to still be priorities for different offenses. That being said, I mean, defenses make adjustments as well. Mm -hmm. And this year we saw a really weird, I actually wrote an article about it midway through the season. And Crack knows this, obviously, because we were talking about because we make making bets every single week on these totals. The unders were smashing earlier this year. Yes, and were. it was for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons was the way that the league was officiating things. Unbeknownst to them, they just thought, well, let's emphasize this. Let's not talk about this other one, but let's also emphasize this. They were calling, I don't know if you guys remember this because I'm an, I'm a psycho who pays attention, but all the ineligible man downfield penalties yep, yep. that they used to be calling the first eight weeks of the season were ridiculous and limiting some of those explosive plays from offenses. So it was the way that they were enforcing the game that was a little bit different, but coupled with the way that the defenses were playing, especially the too high style of defense, and it was limiting explosive plays, 
And what we got, unfortunately, I think for a lot of viewers who are watching these games and see like nine to, you know, nine to seven at halftime or third quarter, they saw all these games that weren't as exciting is, is because of the way that defenses were playing and the league was officiating things. Um, the league made some adjustments, but we still, you know, we, we saw a lot of gross football this season. There were a lot of games earlier this year where the favorites were still covering the spread and the underdogs just weren't scoring. And you yeah. were seeing games like 23 to seven yeah. and it just wasn't competitive. It wasn't high scoring. It wasn't entertaining. And basically like, every game my New York Giants played. <laughs> right. <laughs> Essentially. Yeah. And we, we, we don't <laughs> care as long as we're on top of what's happening and we're placing bets and able to make money off of those bets. It's okay, but it, I'm a, still a fan of the game, yeah. and I will care if the product looks terrible. And for a while this year, the product did look terrible. Like I do not think that this was a very good season. I, now, uh, back to your point in terms of the unders. We talked about this on the show before. I felt like it was a lot of just not high-level quarterback play. When you look around the, the breadth of the entire league, I feel like there just weren't that many elite quarterbacks, truthfully. And that that led that led to a lot of low scoring games, a lot of you know just not very strong offensive production. Um, but but what what are your thoughts on that? No, there was there was poor quarterback play this year for sure. And this is one of the years. Think about it every single year because the NFL the NFL wants points. I think deep down they want these points because they want players to get close to breaking records. They added an extra game, and we saw in the 2020 season, the COVID season. All these offenses, you know, because the road teams were were not having to deal with crowd noise, so their offenses were scoring a little bit more. Yeah. We saw points, we saw yards, we saw records being broken, and it was a lot of fun to tune in. Like, how much closer is he going to get to break this record? How much closer is that guy getting? Th this year, there was zero talk of any of that. There was no talk of that. It yeah. was a very uh, poor quarterback play. In my opinion, the coaching was down a little bit overall. I mm. thought the officiating was horrific for a lot of the season. Um, and it was just a confluence of those factors that made it, in my opinion, not a great year. Now, from a profit perspective, it was a quite profitable year. But from an enjoyment perspective, not really. Yeah. And I hope that, you know, next season is a little bit more entertaining from the opening kickoff, which I think is the one down in Brazil. Yeah. Is that, is that gonna, that's going to be the Friday. That's a Friday night kickoff. Uh, maybe they still have a Thursday night, but they're going to do that game on a Friday in Brazil. Philadelphia is going to play a game down in Brazil yeah. to open up the weekend on Friday night. That's going to be interesting. And then um, in terms of your articles in your book, do you see any props that you like for this year's Super Bowl? Any, any matchups that you're already on? Uh, yeah, there's well, and we've been betting these crack, but uh, yeah. we, 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 we like the punters. Because this is the this is Super Bowl that's being played at the highest elevation of any Super Bowl. Oh, how about that? No one knows about that. Oh, really? That's the first time I'm hearing that one. Okay, highest so, elevation Super Bowl ever. Wow. And you also have wow. a look team. at that smirk. I feel like you have some <laughs> up your sleeve with that a one. Oh, I got about four thousand on it. <laughs> <laughs> you got you got a team at sea level, right? San Francisco. Where do they play? They play at sea level. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're going to this elevation. It's obviously a dome, climate controlled environment. And then you have a punter for the Kansas City Chiefs. Think about what the temperature and the weather has been for the games that you've been watching on TV. Kansas City, you have Miami going there. It's like negative wind chill. Then they go up to Buffalo where it's freezing cold. So they've been playing in games where that ball is hard as a rock. And you get the punter now going to punt. And he's familiar with the stadium because they play once a year yes. in this stadium. And he's going over his yardage total as well with regularity. So that's one that um, was on the, the early uh, props that we were getting involved. It's going to be a lot more. The unders are going to, like I said, the unders are going to be the... So I think we did. Uh, I think I think there was a couple unders, but that we just want to jump on them a little bit early. But um, I'm so excited you guys brought up punter props yeah. <laughs> because like this is Something this no is, one would look at. Yeah, well, the, the, one thing, the one thing is that um, it, you know, Crack was talking about this with me previously, so he probably doesn't care that I'm discussing it here. But for most of the Super Bowl, for most of the regular season games, lines are lined, props are lined. We just talked about hundreds of props on all of these games and they're lining things 
that are standard, right? How many yards this receiver is going to have, how many receptions right. he's going to have, what his longest reception is, all these standard props. You got a game that's very close to pick them. It's hard to get massive edges mm. from get even some of the game props, but the props that they don't normally line for games that they now do line for Super Bowls, those are ones where you just have to double check and make sure you're going through all of them because there can be, I don't want to say necessarily mistakes, although you've obviously identified some of those crack, but there's opportunities for sports bettors when the books aren't as familiar with lining this certain prop 18 weeks during the regular season and four, you know, three weeks during the playoffs. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm not saying to bet those mistakes. Let, let me, cause I don't want people to think that I'm taking shots at casinos. I'll tell Doug, he has a bad line here. I'll tell Jay over at Westgate. He's got a bad line. I'll tell the guys that, that are running circa if they have a bad line, but there are some sports books. I will take advantage of and take advantage of stations, casinos. Oh boy. Let them hang up a bad line. I'll be the first one in there betting. They throw anyone else with a, with a pulse treasure Island. <laughs> Let me, let me find a bad line over there. I'll jump right in the trough. Yeah. So <laughs> there, there are some that should watch out. You know? Yeah. I, f I feel like, you know, to my opinion, at least, and look, I'm not, I'm not a bookmaker, but if you make that mistake, I feel like that's on you. You know what? I understand. And it, it normally is. The old adage is you take a bet, you pay a bet. I right. understand. But someone can make mistakes and it can happen, you know. Let's say let's say you had a game where you had a 10-point favorite and you were betting you're you're betting the uh the, the team the team that's a 10 point favorite, they got plus 10 instead of minus 10. By accident, mm -hmm. they put a minus a, a plus instead of a minus. That's you're taking you're taking a big shot there. If you want to continue to play there in the future, there the you you can't bet it. Mm -hmm. Because they're gonna they're gonna throw you out for good. You know, I was chased outside stations, casinos for a ticket and they said oh we gotta have that ticket and then when when i said what do you mean i, I bet my average bet on the on the bet and uh, they said yeah but the line moved two and a half points since you bet it we don't want that kind of action we gotta have the ticket back or you're not allowed to bet at any of our properties that's what they said and by the way the game lost yeah, it was five grand too i don't care i'm just saying like i didn't take a shot at them i bet what i bet on a lot of things yeah but they said that oh yeah you knew the quarterback was going to be out though and it did yeah I, I did i absolutely did i got information that it was going to be the game started in 20 minutes. Got information the quarterback got hurt during warmups, and uh, he wasn't going to play. And it's not my fault that you guys don't get that information. Pay somebody like I pay people for information. Pay somebody. Pay someone to have a Don Best screen and keep up the injuries. Have someone in the stadiums maybe and find out what's going on. You know, pay somebody for that. Just because I'm doing my research doesn't mean. Listen, everyone that goes up to the counter and makes a bet, guess what? They all think they have edges, yeah. but they usually don't. Yeah. That's a real edge, though. When you have a quarterback that was, it was plus 17, the line went to 14 and a half, and uh, I took the plus 17, and, and the bet lost. The bet lost, actually. And, um, yeah, they, they, they backed me off, and they said, um, you know, they, they, they want the ticket back, and or else I'm not allowed to bet any of the properties. And um, I've been burying them on air ever since, so let's see if I can get my $5,000 of press back on them. <laughs> Let's you know, go. We and want lose. They have big signs all over town. Yeah. We want. We love our winners. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tell it to somebody else. Yeah. I want to. I want to ask you guys something about the Super Bowl MVP market. Do you like betting those? Only quarterback wise, and even before. Mm -hmm. So if you liked Kansas City for the Super Bowl a couple weeks ago, you could have got in Mahomes. At, you know, plus three to one. Yeah. Because, but it's an action bet. You have to win a couple games. Even now, probably it is uh, quarterbacks are normally named. Uh, the MVP Warren would know those numbers more than me. Um, and, and, but I would think the quarterback, you know, you can get plus one, like 150. Is that right? Is that, I see that in Mahomes, And then you can get plus two to one on Brock Purdy. And by the way, uh, the MVP for the year market was like just for the year. Brock Purdy was a favorite all year long. Yeah. And um, we know that's going to be, uh, let's see, Baltimore, right? Jackson. Lamar, right? Yeah. Lamar. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Lamar, Lamar, yeah. yeah. Lamar won that. So. And he deserves it. The guy's unbelievable. Jackson's only, he just had a bad game. Right, right, right. Let me tell you something. If they play that game over again, probably six out of ten times with the same exact squad, I, I, probably Baltimore wins, you know? But uh, I, I needed Kansas City for sure. And and uh, um, just to prove the helmet colors weren't wrong, I'm happy about that. The, the, the Super Bowl colors weren't oh, wrong. All goodness. these conspiracy people saying, oh, it's, it's been the last two years. You know what, though? Thank God for all those people that do that because they allow guys like me to make a living. Uh, by, by, you know, thinking all these different things. And every single sports book you go, this is going to not be popular, I'm going to say now. 
Every single sports book you go to, what happens? Screaming, yelling, and when you lose, what happens? Quiet. Fix. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fix. <laughs> it's that rigged. That was fixed. This is scripted. Yeah. That's fixed. You know, it happens in every single sports book, and I'll tell you why. I could be betting the side of the game, and Nick could be betting the side. I'll be betting side A, and Nick will be betting side B. And we could both watch the game, and we can mo both make cases by the end of the game, by the end of 60 minutes, why we should have won the game. Yeah. And that keeps you coming back to the sports book lane 11 to 10. That's what keeps you coming back. And and they're always looking there. Like, you know, you'll see something on there, and like, yeah, but we fumbled going in. And I did, and I'll, I'll rebuttal and say, well, what about the time that – we got uh, they, they missed holding. They showed it five times. You can always make cases for yeah. why you should have won the game. Therefore, of course, we're humans. The human condition is, well, we, we, we've been trying, we've been conditioned from little kids to win a checkers, chess, monopoly with our dad's life operation. And whenever you're playing with your dad and mom, we've been conditioned from a little kid to win. So when you lose, you get mad and you say, well, it can't be me. I'm not the one. It had to be something. Oh, yeah, the game's fixed. You know, I, I just... I, I, and people get mad because I see the comments. People, crack. You really don't think the games are fixed? N no, I yeah. don't think NFL is fixed. I now I know either. they've had situations in NBA, the ref and stuff. I know there's situations that come up, especially in college sports or something. I'll be real blunt though. If there was a Bible here, I touched the Bible. I, my hand to the Bible. I've never been told that. I'm a hey, crack. This down here. This game's fixed. I've never been told that. Never once ever touch a Bible. Never been told the game's fixed. I would love to be told it, though, if you know yeah, That would be nice, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, no, being serious, though, I've never been told nothing like that. So. Warren, the player that has gotten the most volume for a Super Bowl MVP is none other than Taylor Swift's boyfriend, Travis Kelsey. Now you can get him at 12 to 1. I don't like it at 12 to 1. However, I got him at 60 to 1 wow. two weeks ago. Because that I laid sixty to one. Yes. I laid out, yeah, over at William Hill. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Actually, on the show, he was eighty-five to one on another. Oh, sports oh yeah, because it's, it's an action bet, right? Yeah. Way before the. Way before. Yeah, so it was I'm before they, they was you. before they played the Ravens. Wow. And and my case was truthfully, and no slight to him, I think he's an amazing receiver. Saint Brown on the Lions had sure. better MVP odds for the Super Bowl than Travis Kelsey. I thought it was ridiculous. I was a believer, and tell me if you agree with this and how how you've seen things. I felt like Kansas City was saving him all year towards the tail end for the playoffs. And if you look at his numbers in the playoffs, this is the Travis Kelsey that we know and love. How do you feel about Travis Kelsey, that take? And then also, yeah, he's the most wagered guy to win MVP, but my number is, I mean, Bill even got a pop out of that. Here and then. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, the one thing that you have to consider is the fan vote for – you know, I, I this, did consider this. this. Right. I definitely did. <laughs> so the fan has, what is it, 20%? I believe oh, so, no, yeah. really? Of, of, oh, I didn't of the uh, vote towards the Super Bowl. And this is the first time that that's happening. And so if you think about it, even an okay game from Travis Kelsey, I mean, I underestimate continuously how many Swifties are out there. But there's hundreds of thousands of them that are going to be watching this game. I'm, I'm down Super now. Bowl I'm, parties. I'm one as well now. As I'm of, not saying anything as of the wrong, last two weeks, I'm in. I'm not saying anything wrong, Like, she's got good music. I'm not saying anything about it, but they, the, all of them are going to be voting for Travis Kelsey for sure. And so that's absolutely going to help his bet uh, a little bit. I think, look, tight ends have had some success against this defense of the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, Sam Laporte last week, I believe he had nine catches on like 12 targets, something to that extent. We've seen multiple guys have games where they're catching close to double-digit targets against this defense, even though they've got a great linebacking core spearheaded by Fred Warner. But the one area that they have used Travis Kelsey a little bit more of last week, and then I believe it's going to happen in this game as well because they went up against a good linebacking core in the Baltimore Ravens last week is more perimeter targets during the regular season. His targets were centered right around seven to eight yards, middle of the field like that. That was Travis Kelsey's hot spot. If you look at some of the heat maps, Yeah. but in the playoffs so far, he's been operating away from the middle of the field, a little bit more towards the hash and the numbers area of the field and that's exactly where you have to operate against the Kansas against the San Francisco 49ers defense you will be able to have success there 
tight ends have been able to do that. And it feels like the Kansas City Chiefs are heading in that direction, at least to date. So it's not something inconceivable. You have to say, well, they only throw it in the middle to Travis Kelsey. And now you can't do that. Like, they've already been gravitating a little bit away from that. So I, I think he's got the potential. Were they saving him? I don't know. I mean, they were, they were what, uh, they were only a wild card team. So they couldn't really save him that much. I mean, they did not, they weren't like a first round team that could have just like sat him on the side. We're good. Travis, like take some breaks. I think they were trying to win these games. They weren't pulling away. And that's the biggest fear. If you're betting Kansas city on the money line or, or taking a couple of points is the fact that this is a team that toned it down in the second half massively offensively and defensively. They aren't scoring points. They aren't uh, allowing points but they're relying too much on their defense to try to close out games. And we just saw the San Francisco 49ers twice come back mm. from deficits. Yes. That's a team that's capable of doing that. The Kansas city chiefs have to put the pressure on at the beginning of the game in order to get the the ball out of McCaffrey's hands more into Brock Purdy's hands, but then they got to keep that pressure on with scoreboard pressure, not just their defense pressure, but on the scoreboard by continuing to put up points. And it's not something they've been doing when they've had leads in the fourth quarter, especially their a dot, their target depth is like 1.7 yards. They're hardly throwing the ball down the field at all. They're trying to take these time consuming, sustained drives. They're going to 13 personnel running the ball a lot. Um, and if it works, that's one thing. But if you're punting the ball back and trying to play field position, yeah. that's probably not a formula that's going to have success. You, especially in a one score game against the Niners with a coach like Kyle Shanahan and players like Debo and Ayuk. And even though I'm not as big on Ayuk having a massive game here, you've got all this talent there. Kittle, Ayuk, Debo, McCaffrey, there's explosiveness all over the place there. One mistake by these aggressive Kansas city corners, you could give up that play that then all of a sudden we're in the lead for most of the game. We're feeling really good about where we're at in the fourth quarter, but we're not scoring that many points, but San Francisco hasn't really done anything. All of a sudden they get a DB to ju jump or bite. He tries to go on these DBs like Sneed. They're very grabby as well. Yeah. Um, and they'd rather get a, penalty potentially called for holding, which is only five yards. This refs were doing this a lot more this year than pass interference, which is spot mm. penalty, but they're going to try to go for those. But what if they don't get that grab and Debo gets right past them and boom, that's a 50 yard touchdown pass to then put the Niners back on top. And then your offense, which has done nothing has to come back and try to figure it out. So they got to be aggressive this whole, whole game until the final whistle, in my opinion. And don't mind me getting the phone. Out. I wanted to check and yeah, he, you can get you can get fifteen to one on him. You can get how about this seventy five to one on Kittle. So I mean, I'm not advising those bets. By the way, matter of fact, the public likes doing that though. They, they they're always looking, you know, for the needle in the haystack. Bet a little to get a lot. Yeah. And I like the yes no. Like Circa has yes no propositions on a lot of these. There's not enough money in the world though, because because you have to lay. In other words. Uh, the minus on Kelsey may be laying 20 to one, taking back 15 to one. So 20 to one, you know, if you want to win a thousand dollars, there's 20,000. That's one bet. The no's are actually the way to go. Mm. The no's, but listen, they're saying there's only, there's only going to be like, uh, I guess six, uh, six touchdowns in this game. According to the total six touchdowns and three field goals. So let's say, uh, one or two guys may score this a touchdown twice. So Multiple, you're yeah. talking there's only five guy, five touchdowns, four touchdowns, four different individuals that are going to score a touchdown. You could bet yes, no on 20 different people. Yeah. So think about it. No, 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 no. And you know maybe throw out the favorites and throw out you know like the like the Kelseys or whatever it may be. The no's are the right way. It takes a lot of cheddar though to do that. Well, well, first off, Warren. Uh, so so you're telling me that the Travis Kelsey. Uh, that bet has a chance. You're, that's, For that's, sure, that's, yeah, that's, it, it does. I mean, <laughs> like like Crack said, most of the time it's going to go to the yeah. quarterback, but you could easily see, and it's going to be hard to steal it away from Patrick Mahomes. Sure, sure. But if he does throw an interception at some point right. in this game and Travis Kelsey has eight or nine targets, catches the vast majority, has at least one of the touchdowns, if not more, and you get the fan vote involved there, I, I definitely could see that happening. And, and, also, like some of the actual voters on the game, like Roger Goodell in his press conference today is talking about how 
he thinks Taylor Swift is good for the game. Like he, like a lot of people are seeing this Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift thing play out in real time. Uh, and it's bringing in a lot more fans and there. It definitely is. Yeah. I know that, which too. is not a bad thing. No, like that's is. actually good. Good for us. Like we, yeah. we want the sport to grow. We want more people coming into the sport. We want to be able to have more opportunities. The more people that are here, the more people that are betting on the game, we want more betters involved. So I think it's awesome that this is all happening, but, um, let's, let's see. But I do think that that bet does have a chance. It's, it's it's priced like a longer shot, which it is, but it definitely has a shot. I guess the only thing I'll push back on you on as far as uh, the, the Chiefs in terms of them not pushing the pace, they're not the Lions, and, and they're not, you know, they're the not Packers. the Packers. You know what I'm saying? In terms of both those teams, like especially the Packers, God bless, they had that game by the boots. Unbelievable. They had that game over. But, you know, same thing with the Lions. The Lions, like, but I feel like all of us felt, especially after that that bobble catch touchdown that they ended up getting a touchdown, I, mean, I think anybody that had the Lions, I had the Lions, Nick knows I had the Lions all, all season. Um, everybody in that moment was like, here we go. Yeah, and they were still down. They're still down 10. You know what I mean? So I think, I think if the Chiefs are able to get up, I don't think that they're going to they're gonna give as much oxygen for them to come back they'll kick those field goals to go up three possessions. They're not going to go for it. They're going to kick that field goal. And content to back to your game pressure, I'm a, I'm a coach, so I understand game pressure a lot. When you said that, I was like, champion for war. <laughs> <laughs> but as game pressure, you're, you're putting, I'm putting you on tilt just that you have to do something. You're going to have to make something happen, which now leads you to more mistakes or to us just running the clock out. And, and you saw the Ravens were making mistakes before – the, they even got out on the field with all the game planning of running of uh, abandoning the running attack yep. and throwing the football. It was because Patrick Mahomes is standing on the other sideline. Patrick Mahomes goes up the field on the first drive, scores a touchdown. All of a sudden, the Ravens are like, okay, we, we got to throw the ball a little bit here. When no, they were totally fine. They could have kept running it. Yeah. They could have started running it. Let's just put it that way. Um, so there's no doubt there is a lot of pressure when you go up against Patrick Mahomes. And I agree. I mean, Steve Spagnuolo is the unheralded guy on the Kansas City Chiefs this season, in my opinion. The job that he's done, there's been players in and out of the lineup, injuries. He is, think about Spagnolo. I was talking to Crack about this because it's one of the first times he and I worked together uh, and I got, was getting to know him. But back in the 2007, New York Giants, New England Patriots, Patriots undefeated team, yep. going up against the Giants, Patriots scoring 45 points every single game. Spags comes up with the game plan to completely squash that offense and limit that offense. What, uh, Whatever the final score was in that Super 17, Bowl, fourteen, 17, 14 will be wow. will be world champions. You guys know your stuff. <laughs> Held <laughs> to hardly anything. Also, and a then, Giants fan. So. Oh, well, yeah. I'm a Redskins <laughs> fan. So, and then Michael Strahan, 17, 17, 14 will yeah, be world be, champions. Wow. And you then last year it. they held uh, Spags held the Philadelphia Eagles number one ranked rushing attack. We were talking about that yep. in the studio earlier. Held them to forty five rushing yards on seventeen rushes. 2.9 yards per carry, longest run of nine yards. This was a Philadelphia Eagles running backs uh, core that was the best rushing offense entering the game and a Kansas City Chiefs run defense that was not very good. What do we have this game? We have the best rushing offense in the NFL, number one ranked 49ers, best rushing offense, and a Kansas City Chiefs run defense that that's their Achilles heel. They're better against the pass, worse against the run. So it's up to Spags to come up with a game plan that's going to shut down. Not, I don't think you can shut down Christian McCaffrey, but you can limit him. Yeah. And he's had games where you've been able to limit him. And then that's when Kyle Shanahan is going to start to get pressure on him. We already know he's a little shaky in those key moments. Mm -hmm. Andy Reid's had the experience, made the right calls, won games. He struggled earlier in his career as well. He's had those sins too. But Kyle Shanahan... It's much more recent, the, the guy struggling in these pressure moments. And that's why I'm a, when I'm talking to coaches, and especially in the offseason, I'm a firm believer in you got to go to some of those military-style training courses in the offseason to figure out how to make decisions under pressure mm. because they do that as a, in military training. NFL coaches on the sideline, think about it. You're standing there. You're trying to make a call. You have a couple seconds to get the right call in. What's going through your brain? How do you calm your nerves? How do you make the right call? Coaches can choke just on regular play calls. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Kyle, Kyle, he's one of the best play designers in the NFL. 
and I love his general strategy, but he's prone to some of those mistakes. Yeah, and in big spots. Yeah. And it gets highlighted more because it's in the Super Bowls. With the Falcons yeah. as the OC, and then the last time that they played. Yeah, it's crazy, man. He got a lot of pressure on him this week. He definitely got a lot of pressure. Who do you think has more pressure between the two teams? I would think definitely San Fran. I would think San Fran's the more pressure. Um, you know, KC, their coach, the, you know, Patrick, they've been in this situation. They've been in this spot. So you got Purdy, who did not look good in these. But I know he came back second half, I understand. And people said, oh, my God, Kansas City, 3-0 uh, was the score second half. They didn't score any points. They did exactly what they had to do, though. If they had to step it up, they, you know, they pulled the pedal off the metal. Yeah. They would have stepped up the pedal on the metal if they need to. They did what they had to do to win. So I think San Fran has, has uh, more pressure. But let me just tell you, the, the smart, sharp syndicates that I know are on San Fran. Mm. I know, you know, even after I bet the plus three, it went down to one. That's right. The next day it was one at the key spots that control the market. It was one at Chris, and it was one at Circa. So this, this syndicate came and bet the minus one. Matter of fact, it was on the front of the New York Post. They bet a million dollars to win 833000 at Caesars. Big thing on the front of the paper, and there's been more on, on that team. That's a giant syndicate. The second thing is, um, you know, the 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 a, a big release service that's a winning handicap. And not there's not many. You're sitting between uh, two of them here, but there's not too many of them out there. They actually release San Fran. So, but I don't really respect the line on playoffs and Super Bowl moves like I do during a regular season, mm. especially preseason. That's a whole different animal in itself. But that being said. I'll have a hundred times more on proposition bets financially than I'll have on Kansas city. And I need Kansas city to win for a lot of money. I have a big future. Uh, I bet and it didn't stop me from betting a plus three though. So uh, I even, th I even think the money line now this plus plus one twenty three. <laughs> there's, you know, there's, there's some really good markets back East and I hope we get them I, I, out here. We're probably not going to get these betting exchanges. It's amazing. Those betting exchanges that are legal in New Jersey, you can get on this game minus two, minus 101, or plus two, minus 101. Now you pay a 1% on acquisition, you know, fee, but even the money line, you can lay a dollar 25, take a dollar 24. I mean, we, we, we need those type of markets here because that that's, you know, we're, we're used to laying 11 to 10 here, but we have a lot of outs and a lot of options here. You know, people, that's something people don't, don't do a lot. Um, Anyways, like people, only, they come to Vegas and they want to have one sports book to play with. That's ridiculous. If you're betting any serious money, if you're coming here for three days of, of a Super Bowl or something or four days of Super Bowl and you want to bet anything more than, you know, 50 bucks, you should put, throw some money in some different apps. And yeah. even though the apps I said I was against, I would have stations. I would have Coast, which is Boyd Coast. They're yeah, scared Bo to death Bo Boyd anyone. Gaming. Boyd Gaming. They're scared to death of me. Uh, <laughs> Coast stations. They're they're they're, they're the slower moving square apps in town. I would definitely have them. Then you could throw one of the apps like I just seen Circa downtown. Circa has unbelievable odds on some things. So uh, there are tighter margins on certain things. And then you have like Westgate has one off. People don't even know this. Westgate has one off five certain days for the Super Bowl. So does South Point, 105 Juice. So if you're betting anything more than, you know, 500 bucks, yeah. you, you should ha you're going to save, you know, 50% less you're going to bet with these places. You should have money, you know, you should have in your arsenal, if you're serious about it, you should have a lot of different sports books. I understand it's social. People have fun with it. I understand why. Um, but I I'm just giving you situations. Bill, what, uh, I, I, I love I love that he mentioned that because who does he sound like? Don't I tell everybody hits me up and they ask me, Bill, uh, what apps do I have? I'm like, all of them. Yeah. Like, all of them. I yeah. shop the lines. Yeah. I, know, I know you know this, but this is, sure. this is what I talk about yeah. all the time, too. No, you got to like, have different ones. I go, I go wherever I get the best number. Sports books, like yeah. stations, I give them credit. One thing they do, they're going to they're gonna take a bet and they're going to move the line based on the bets where other people move on air. They just move it because someone else moved it. Stations mm -hmm. is pretty good at that. Not for me, but I mean, for guys that are betting, you know, a couple hundred bucks, it's, it's definitely worth it to have so i talk good and bad if i really hated it i would never ever put them on and tell them the good thing you know what i mean so uh yeah and make sure you have the win too let me tell you they have some low hanging fruit right now they'll have some opinion on the games on some of the underdogs and uh, there you go
Dude, I just noticed the time. We were supposed to have them yeah, too for 30 I, minutes. For 30 minutes. Right. I know, I know. I know but I know you right. guys got dinner and all that, and I appreciate the time. On to the buffet. It was great. They're going to lose money too. It's, a, it's positive EV for me. There they're not go. getting yeah, yeah. They're, they're dead. <laughs> Warren, I got to <laughs> say, before we, we, we let you guys go, and Bill, i uh, been a fan of your work. Warren, yours also. You're the reason why I hate when teams run on second and long. And it's cool when I used to feel like that was a dumb decision, and then when I got – across your content i'm like oh a guy that does this for a living and actually does the analytics he agrees with it it was really validating for that me. makes so. me feel good so it was really a surprise bringing him in here yeah no dude yeah seriously <laughs> man i good. i get the book all the time and i, I reference like, it do you think i can get on with you i said i don't think so well, uh, no, I'm joking. Uh, come on now of course uh, nah, this was a this cool is surprise your, this is your spot i'm just here no, in the background yeah. and, and i appreciate it thanks, anytime, thanks for coming dude, thanks for and, having uh, us on anytime you want me on i'm on yeah definitely definitely well, well i i do have to ask so if KC wins, you had your future. Where where, where are we taking home? Um, probably around th the futures for twenty five thousand. The game I bet uh, seventy five hundred, but twenty five at five thousand seventy five. So yeah, it's 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 a good amount of money. And I usually don't answer questions like that. I, no, no, I, I yeah, was. I don't I, want anyone to it, think I'm bragging and stuff. No, about no. It, look, if if you he if you hesitated, I was going to ask you like you know. Is it a bins that we're talking? Or is it like, no. <laughs> like it, just it in terms of like into numbers? The, into the game. We have losing weeks too. We don't just yeah. win every single week. That's right. You know, I mean, we have, it's very, it's impossible to have a losing season. I'll be blunt. I don't know how, I haven't even had a losing quarter in a decade. So, but, but I mean, we have losing weeks. We have lose. I, I had two losing months last month, uh, last year. I mean, it happens. The year before that, I had none. Yeah. Or two, two, three years ago, I didn't have a single losing month all year. So that happens. You have a losing month or two. Um, it's all part of the game. But that being said, I'll close the show with this. Would I get into sports betting now? Would I want my kids get to get into sports betting now if I had kids? The answer may shock you. No. I don't want them getting into this. It's it's so hard to make money. There's so many different skill sets you need and so many different connections you have to have. And I wouldn't want my kids getting into this. I want them to, you know, if they want to go to college, go to college. I would want them to have, I always say this, street smarts, uh, common sense, Decision-making skills. Act as if that's very more important than a college degree. Drop the mic. <laughs> that New York City. <laughs> I, this is why I always say I always love New York. New York is New York. Uh, I'm from I'm from DC area, but same but, thing. But New York. What do you think? DC, New York, Philadelphia, Chicago. We're all no, the same. we're similar, but there's something about y'all. <laughs> y'all are different. Y'all like like <laughs> we like. DC and you know Philly and you know you Boston. Boston. We all we Boston. all have our own you know our own kind of sauce. But New York, it's New different. York, New York's a different place. It's, it's different. always a different place. Bill Warren, thanks again for your time. Like I said, it was supposed to be thirty minutes. We've had you for about an hour, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank both. you guys. Before we bring on Alan, let's go ahead and pull up the Patreon, baby. Patreon helping pay the bills. Patreon.com slash Veterans Minimum. Get access to the Discord. Get access to the betting picks. Get access to giveaways, which if we could get an ISO once again, yeah, baby, right here. Look at this helmet. This shit is fire. It got me a little stimulated also. No blue chew needed. Uh, we're giving away this helmet to a member of the Patreon. Got to be in the $10 tier or higher for the month of February. We'll give this out in uh, March. So one of the March shows that we'll do will... Uh, We'll give this out, man. It's a legit Super Bowl 58 helmet. Uh, this is the one that we're going to give away. So, yeah, patreon.com slash veterans minimum. As you can see here, you got to be in the $10 tier or higher. And to the members of the Patreon is roll call time. We got Mahul Patel, Abel Rez, and Ben Kotsian, Christopher Velasquez, Derek Plates, Dylan Chadwick, Jerry Shapiro, Jordan Riley, Mike Stevens, Mike Wozniak, Nick Crummich, and Thomas Robinson. And shout out to Christopher Velasquez, Derek Plates, and in a month or two, Dylan Chadwick. You guys are about to pass the $1,000 mark to the Patreon all time. You guys are crazy, but I love each and every one of you, and I appreciate it because you guys are helping build the show and building the brand. So once again, patreon.com slash veterans minimum. Josh is still here in the building, and we got calling in. Back from the 718, my guy, a double. Alan, what up? Man, we're here. <laughs> Super Bowl matchup, the rematch, everything's happening. And uh, Alan, uh, for those that don't know, uh, lifelong Falcon fan. Yeah. They, man, how did you, you like, some days I swear you be like reading my mind. 
before I th- I'm like, make sure I ask Alan how he feels about Raheem Morris. Like literally, oh, I said that to myself. Okay, I wasn't even going oh, with that. that was I was the first thing I, I was, was gonna, gonna mention. Say to him. That's so fun. I was gonna mention that his boy Matt Ryan is out here doing media, and they keep showing twenty eight to three. Kyle Shanahan coaching in this game. That's where I was going with it because Alan knows I'm petty, <laughs> and Alan knows that if I could get a dig at someone that I love and care about, I'm gonna do it. So Alan, you know what I'm saying? How you feeling? Oh, I'm excited to see Matt Ryan out there. He, he's <laughs> done a great job commentating this year. So good for him. Looking forward to seeing what Kyle Shan could do. I think when it comes to p- people in this Super Bowl that have the most pressure on him, I think Kyle Shan is probably number one on the list. I think he has a lot to prove in the Super Bowl. So uh, the big guns are out. Damn, that's a good one, actually. Yeah. It's, it, you're going to throw off the show a little bit, but I want to I wanna stay with that. Give me, give me your top three most pressure, pressure players or coaches in this, I mean, in this Super Bowl. Listen, there, there truly, there truly isn't any pressure on Mahomes or the Chiefs. Dude, I disagree. Well, I I hate this take that I, people have. I well, I'll tell you why. Okay, I'll tell you elaborate. why. Elaborate. Sorry, listen, yeah, they, I just get no, fired no, no, up. no. Listen, they they've been to. They've already they've won two. They've lost one. Like it, there, there's no like this is a legacy matchup for him. If he wins this one, I've said this on my show, he wins this one. Now he's he's in a group of literally only a few guys. Troy Aikman, Joe Montana, Terry Bradshaw, Joe Montana. And then, of course, the GOAT. Tom Brady, yeah. Those are the only quarterbacks that are with him at that point. So Patrick Mahomes doesn't really have pressure. If he gets there, I guess the pressure, truthfully, from the Chiefs' perspective is how much longer do we have the big fella? If, if if we if we're saying we got Andy Reid for another five years, no pressure at all. If we're saying this might be the last time or next year might be the last time, you start to have a little bit more pressure in terms of we got to get it done while he's still here. So that's why I say the Chiefs don't have pressure. The Niners, I mean, outside of you know Kittle's got pressure because he's starting to get a little bit longer in the tooth. Obviously, Trent Williams, longtime Redskin, been on the Niners now, finally getting to the Super Bowl. Like, those guys have pressure from an age and performance standpoint. Purdy, Purdy has pressure, obviously, just because he's the quarterback. But it, it does squarely fall on John Lynch and on Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan, for reasons that everyone's talked about, from the play-calling standpoint, from blowing leads, from, you know, not getting it done in big spots, and also, you know, coaching the team that his dad coached first. All of those things... Play, play a role. The reason why I disagree with the Chiefs and Mahomes thing is because, bro, there's mad pressure on him. Like, you want to – if he's already answering questions about him being the GOAT, I already think he's the best quarterback of all time that I've seen personally. I know it's only been like 15 years that I really understand football, and I'm one of those guys that if it happened before I was born, I really don't really care about it that much. I'm just Shame. saying, just one of those established 91. However, if he's already being mentioned in that air, bro, there's mad pressure on him to continue to win and to continue to get closer. And like you said, you, you become a lot of people got two. My boy Easy E got two. His brother got two. That's right. Big Ben got two. Yes, he does. There's a lot of people that have two. Having three is not. Now you're at a whole different. This is a VIP. Yes. Yes. And there's a velvet rope for one other guy. Yep. Right? Like, so I think there's a lot of pressure on them. And also, like you said, how much longer is Andy Reid there? How much longer is Travis Kelsey going to be playing at this high level? I'm like, bro, those are those are two of the three, Allen, that we talked about when we did the, the show at the beginning of the playoffs. And I had asked Allen, I was like, bro, I keep looking at the Eagles 17 to 1 and the Chiefs at 11 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. And we did a case for and against each team. And the case for was trusting the infrastructure and the pedigree of Andy Reid, Kelsey, and Mahomes. We know one of them is going to be there for another decade, but how much longer is Andy Reid going to coach? And Kelsey's 34. How much longer is he going to be playing at this high level? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of pressure on them because, yo, windows close and them shit slam fast. Shut. Shut down, bro. Like, there's no, oh, we're going to be great for a decade. It's like, nah, dude, you might not be. And that's why what Kansas City's doing right now is so insane. Six, 
straight AFC title games, four Super Bowl. So I think there's a lot of pressure. For me, he got the most pressure. No, no, that's I, and I, that's fair because windows close. Right. The the pressure for from a window standpoint of we gotta get this done while we can get it done. Yes, that's a hundred percent. But but I feel like um, you know they have gotten it done. Yeah. So they understand the pressure. Maybe maybe okay there is pressure, but at the same time that pressure isn't consuming me and taking me out of my game plan. Whereas the pressure on the other side is we got to, Lord, I'm hurt. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it can be, it's palpable. It can, it can, it can take you out. Mm. So maybe, it, maybe it's just difference in pressure, I guess. Alan, how do you feel about those two? Uh, windows don't close with Patrick Mahomes. I think oh. that's pretty clear when you're arguably one of the best quarterbacks ever. I think Joe Burrow said it best. Windows don't close when you're at, such an exceptional quarterback. So I completely disagree with that. And I don't think the Chiefs have much pressure. I think this is the worst Chiefs team under Mahomes. I think they've completely overachieved in the playoffs. You know, I think it's totally understandable if they fall short. To me, the pressure is completely on Kyle Shannon. They have a lot of pressure on Christian McCaffrey just because the whole running back conversation. Like McCaffrey and San Fran can win a Super Bowl. I'm hoping this helps add leverage to the whole running back. Mm. You know, contract conversation. So I think McCaffrey, arguably to me, has the second most pressure just because he's had such a Hall of Fame season. Like he's had a great, don't worry, wrong, he's on a trajectory for a career, but I think this is arguably his greatest season ever. So he needs to cap it off with a bang. And he's going against a defense that to me is one of the best tackling defenses I've seen in a long time. The Chiefs do not make too many errors. So this is a colossal matchup for McCaffrey. So to me, it's just. Shan McCaffrey, and then I guess Trent Williams, I'll put him up there just because of the age. And it would be cool to see such a premier left tackle win a Super Bowl. But besides that, I don't like hard to see anyone else that really has that much pressure. Yeah, I'm not cheering for Trent. You leave, you leave ugly. I ain't pulling for you. I mean, can you blame him, bro? Wow. Okay. I mean, I, uh, yeah, uh, right? the like, Washington medical staff might uh, disagree with that. I, think, I mean, can you, well, I think the most toxic organization in the league might. Yeah, um, right? Like, can you blame him? He wanted out, bro. You guys are still a mess. No. <laughs> well, this. you know what? Look, I'll say this. The fact that we got rid of him for a third-round pick is is criminal. Yeah, I mean. Criminal. But, but also, be happy you got that because you could have also got nothing. No, he when was, a player comes out, but yo, when a player comes out and says, "Yo, I'm not playing for this organization anymore," the other team that's going to trade for them is Low not going to give up anything. You'd be like, "Yo, bro, we'll just wait." That's why, like, to bring it to basketball for a second, and I know Allen probably remembers this too because he's born and raised New Yorker. When the Knicks got mellow, bro, it took a large, a large demographic of Knicks fans until like two years ago to finally accept Melo, me being one of them, honestly, because he came out and said, like, bro, I'm only going to play for the Knicks. Yeah. Why, why couldn't we just wait four months and just sign him as a free agent as opposed to giving up everything that they gave oh, up? The entire team. Right. So, like, when a player comes out in any sport and they're like, yeah, I'm not playing for this team anymore, they lose leverage. Like, yo, uh, Alan, you saw Mbappe is going to go to Real Madrid? Yeah. Like he's told PSG, yeah, it's it's it's, it's inevitable that I'm gonna end up there. It's like PSG. What can PSG do? They can't do much. Yeah, there's no leverage. It's there's, a foregone conclusion. There's no leverage. Try to loan him out somewhere yeah, else yeah, for five minutes. Happen. All right, let's with, with the Super Bowl, right? Alan, lead us off with what you think is the biggest biggest X factor slash matchup you're looking for in this game, and let's not give out obvious ones, right? Like. Let's try. Don't don't tell us that like Travis Kelsey's the biggest X factor. It's like yeah, no shit. We know that. Like try, let's try to think a little bit outside the box. Hmm, outside the box, because to me, there's two star step. You know, the two stellar units is you got the San Fran offense against Kansas City defense. To me, that's the premier matchup. Not saying the other side of the ball doesn't have tantalizing matchups, but to me, just I think the game's gonna be side of just how much Brock Purdy handles. The coverage disguises, the blitzes, the simulated pressures, just everything that Spag is going to throw at him. And this Chiefs defensive line, I think it's one of the better ones we've seen in a long time. And they really got after Lamar. So, like, when I first think of, like, what's the most compelling thing about the Super Bowl is just how is Brock Purdy going to really handle being under serious adversity against this Chiefs defense. And the Chiefs defense, like, yeah, they could be run out a little bit, but Purdy's going to be put in third long situations. And just seeing what Spags has been doing in this playoffs – 
Oh, it's it's gonna be tricky because we saw what happened when Brock Purdy had to go up against a stellar defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, and he completely crumbled. So how is he gonna handle this type of adversity? And you know, how's Shanahan gonna combat it as well? Because I think probably with Baltimore is they had so many long developing plays. I think if you're Shannon, you got to try to get the ball out as quickly as possible. So how Purdy, you know, those are the three-step, five-step drops and just how quick his processing is, I think is the biggest storyline in this game to go along with, you know, the pressures that Kansas City's going to bring because they completely des- destroyed Baltimore with that. And I would expect them to follow a similar game plan. Uh, yeah, I think um, for me, I'm going to go defensive side for uh, Kansas City as well. I'm saying – the, uh, the second level and then also the secondary. So I, I think Willie Gay. Um, Willie Gay was was hurt for the uh, the matchup with the Ravens after uh, after they beat uh, the Bills. Um, but just his speed, sideline to sideline, I think that'll be he, – he's going to have the main, the main course of Christian McCaffrey and slowing him down. Um, I think that his, his presence is going to be important. But then also Sneed and McDuffie, whoever gets – Ayuk versus who gets Debo Samuel. I think personally, I think it needs to be Snead on Samuel just from a, you know, veteran standpoint. You know what I mean? Like, I just wouldn't want, uh, I know McDuffie had the better season, but Snead, honestly, he's he's savvy. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if McDuffie's still there, especially in this spot. Um, You know, when we had uh, Warren, Warren Sharp on earlier talking about, you know, one big play to, Debo because somebody missed a because of missed how aggressive assignment. that they play. Yeah, yeah, like you you want to might you maybe want to have Sneed on that on that player. You know what I mean? And then have McDuffie shadow Ayuk who can be frustrated and flustered. Um so I mean yeah, I think I think it's going to it's it's going to be it, it look for for Kansas City to win this game, their defense is going to have to continue to perform the way they've been performing. If that happens, they win the game and it it should be should be fairly comfortable. Yeah, it's something interesting about this Chiefs defense and and what Spagnolo, my boy, um, shout out to New York Giants 07. Um, he does playoff spags is a real thing, especially if you talk to Chiefs fans, they've they've echoed the same sentiment. And then look, man, Brock Purdy, for as much shit as he gets, he was a quarterback that did really well against the Blitz this year. And the 49ers offense finished the regular season 10th in NFL history with an average of 6.61 yards per play. So, like, a really productive offense, like top 10 all time. And Spags is going to have a lot to deal with because, you know, third and eight, he's bringing the house. He's been doing it his whole career. <laughs> but are you going to do that against a team so versatile and an offense so versatile and unique? And a quarterback that's done really well against the Blitz, which, like, Allen, just on the surface, wouldn't you just assume that Brock Purdy was not good against the Blitz based on how much he gets slandered by the media? Yeah, I would say so just because you look at the tape and it's just, he just – he's so savvy when it comes to, like, maneuvering inside the pocket. Like, you saw against the Lions how many times he scrambled out. And he just throws so many dangerous passes. Like there was a mm. touchdown he threw against the Jaguars where he just lofted it, crossed his body to Ayuk, and just like nine out of ten times, this is getting picked or deflected. So uh, he's a risk taker, Purdy. But uh, look, Kashan, he's the best play caller in the NFL for a reason. So I think that does benefit him. But I think Spags does always bring the house to like he will mix up. He will have a like a Carl Office drop into coverage and then have McDuffie blitzing on the side. So. Uh, it might look like a blitz, but you'll see. It'd be a four-man pressure still. It's just he's going to get funky with it. And I think the Chiefs have great athleticism across all three levels of the defense. Yeah, I think um, as far as the blitz, especially if it's a man blitz, um, the, the Niners, they have too many weapons. So if they do pick it up, you're in trouble, whether it's McCaffrey coming out of the backfield or you know the route running of Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel or George Kittle. So that's where, you know, blitzing can get you in trouble, even though he may or may not look good. The reason he's probably so good against the blitz is because he has problems everywhere. Everywhere he can look is a good option. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no bad options he's throwing to. So Yeah, and I think also, like, Jennings comes up big for them, too, on yeah. third down. So that's another weapon that yeah. they, they tend to throw to him. I want to go to the other side of the ball because I think a matchup that I'm looking at is 
Bro, I don't know if this is a hot take, but I don't think this Niners defense is as good as people make it out to be. I just think it's very expensive and it's very high profile. You have the most expensive linebacker. You have one of the most expensive defensive linemen in Bosa. Like, you have these all first-round picks and, you know, you got Hargrave and, and Greenlaw and Warner. Chase Young. Yeah. Ward's not cheap. They spent a lot on Ward. Yeah, they spent a lot on Ward, too. Oh, yeah. a little revenge game for Ward. Yeah. And, hey, he's justified his contract. He's like, he's Yeah, no, well no, for season. sure. But what I, don't, I don't think he's part of the problem at all. No, no, he's definitely not. But I just think that yeah. their their defense is a little bit overrated. Oh, I'd, I'd argue they might be – I got to be careful when I say this because I've been getting – yo, I've been getting cooked in the comments. You, Hey, you know what? And uh, I'll talk to Alan, too, for this. You do an amazing job of not saying a word. Me? I'm like, what? You crazy. Like, <laughs> bro, I, I like. Nick never chimed in speak. ever. Yo, I, I like, I like, let, yeah, yo, let, you can have your fun. Like, this is the whole point, right? Like, you can have your fun. And uh, ironically enough, Gronkowski today said Travis Kelsey is the best tight end of all time. So when I said it last week, I got ripped apart. The, the video got over a million views on the four social medias. Shut up, really? Yeah, Facebook, it went crazy. TikTok, it went crazy. And everyone's like, yo, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And then the guy that I said he was better than said that Travis Kelsey is the greatest tight end you, of all time. You feel, you feel like he's the best? Yeah, I said it last week. I, I, think, he's the, I think he's the best, best tight end of all time. And, then, and like, yo, look, the argument that a lot of people make, and I've talked about this with Alan so many times, it's, yo, Gronk got hurt, Gronk got hurt, Gronk got hurt. It's like, yo, that's a big part of your greatness. Your like, legacy, dude, yeah. Eli Manning, right? Of course, I'm going to mention Eli Manning when I get a chance. But a We're big, at three Giants references. Yeah, yeah, come on, man. Alan, I'm down bad, bro. I'm down bad. But, dude, <laughs> yeah. on a serious note, a big part of his greatness is he played every single week. Yeah. LeBron James has been playing for 20-plus years at a high level. Like, that's a big part of your greatness, too, and, like, not getting injured. And I know like there's a lot of variants to that too, but I think that this defense for the Niners is not as ever since Tafungo went down. And look, man, he was an all pro last year. And I didn't know how valuable he was in that secondary and just how they moved him around. And, you know, they made comparisons to Troy Palomalu, but I thought a lot of that had to do with the hair. Just the hair. But dude, when you really go back and you look at some of it, like I was recently watching when they played the Cowboys earlier this year. And like the way they move him around and I don't know if they give him a green light to kind of do whatever he wants. I don't think he's gotten, you know, Ed Reed used to get that. Yeah. <laughs> and like Eric Weddle used to get that. Right. But I think ever since he went down, that defense has not been as good. They're opportunistic. They make big plays when they need to, like, you know, Greenlaw gets the interceptions or, or Fred Warner with a punch out strip sack fumble by Bosa, but you can move the ball on them, dude. And yeah. that's why I think, I think Pacheco could have a really big game. Like, that's an X factor for me because you saw Gibbs and Montgomery going crazy. So, Alan, how do you feel about the, uh, uh, the thoughts on this Niners defense? It definitely can get run on. That's the hugest concern. Like, Green Bay and Detroit have their way. And I know Green Bay and Detroit have two of the more dynamic offenses in the league. I think Detroit's top five, Green Bay top ten, depending on how you rank them. So, I do want to keep that in mind, but at the same time, it's like, both teams are getting like six to eight yards before contact. Like Javon Hargrave, as great as he is, when he gets double team, he gets taken five, seven yards downfield. Like it's bad. Like the Niners, they're more of a hybrid front. They don't have like that true nose tackle that could, you know, mm. two gap and hold double teams. And uh, Fred Warner and Greenlaw, they're both kind of off ball linebackers. They don't play too close to line scrimmage. So teams can really have their way when they run power and like, I could see the Chiefs. They love using three tight end sets. And it wouldn't surprise you one bit if Pacheco, especially with his physical style, like he's so violent. And it, you've seen the Niners. They've struggled to tackle as well. So that, that is a huge mismatch. And I think that's kind of what the Chiefs offense should be looking to do because they do have more of a ball control offense at this point. They've had to adapt given the limitations of receivers. So, yeah, I think you're spot on. This is... To me, easily the biggest X-Factor matchup when it comes to just Chiefs offense against the Niners defense. We got to wrap up just because of the time. I just noticed, Alan, I would love to continue. Mm -hmm. So we'll just end with 
Let's go ahead with picks, man. I was about to say predictions. We gotta yeah, have predictions. let's go with predictions. So let's do this. Let's do each of us, let's give a first touchdown score. All right, so I'll give you guys time to think. I'll go first since I'm the one that's, like, putting these together and kind of, you know, freestyling. Um, a first touchdown score, a winner, and an MVP. Okay. All right, I'll give you guys a chance to think about it. For me, I'm going to go, and this is not, like, betting, right? Because, like, betting is, like, I talked about on the betting show with MP. If you guys haven't checked that out, go and check that out. We got a lot of content coming out this week, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of fun surprises. Um, but I talked about like Kyle Juszczyk, 40 to one, uh, gun to my head. If I had to make a bet in order for someone to score the first touchdown, I'm probably not going to take Juszczyk, but I like that number. I think the guy that scores the first touchdown is going to be Travis Kelsey. I think the chiefs are going to go and win. I'm going, I'm going 24, 21 Kansas city. Remember this Kansas city chiefs team, they play a lot of like under 24 total points scored games. And I think. I think Travis Kelsey wins the MVP. I'm not going to back down. I think it's a good matchup for him. We had Warren Sharp on, and he was talking about how San Francisco is very susceptible to tight end receptions. I think he could have a monster game. And I think if you look at the recipe for the Chiefs in the playoffs, it's been let's feed Travis Kelsey early also. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude had eight catches in the first half last week. He did. <laughs> so those are, that's my trifecta. Kelsey, first touchdown score. Chiefs win to game. Him to win Super Bowl MVP. I've got uh, Pacheco uh, first score. Okay, I like um, that. I have Chiefs winning. Okay, which makes me nervous now because I feel like Allen's gonna pick the Chiefs too. Um, and then uh, and then I had uh, oh sorry I had the Chiefs winning uh, thirty eight thirty. So I said that <sighs> to myself, Wow, a lot of points. <laughs> Jesus, thirty eight <laughs> again. Yeah, for the Chiefs, they had 38 I, I don't think the Chiefs have scored over 30 points in like three months. I know, <laughs> I know. Thir so 38. I, I, um, I was saying that the uh, the Niners stalled out three times kicking field goals, you know, and like, and, and the Chiefs were able to keep scoring points, end up getting to their 30. They only had one field goal, um, and then uh, and then I had Kelsey too because you know that's where our money is, and uh, but that was also before you guys said earlier. I didn't realize that. Uh, the um you know the the fans get to vote this year too yeah so that aspect of it will if the Ch if the Chiefs pull this out Kelsey's gonna have a lot of votes whether he got one catch or not yeah <laughs> that'd be hilarious Alan what do you got let's let's hear your predictions I'm actually going Pacheco touchdown too wow. I, think I gotta bet nicely. this now now yeah. I gotta I gotta bet it yeah I just got a really good feeling he's gonna just go off. Uh, and I got Chiefs 23 to 20. I just think Chiefs are just playing mistake free football right now. That's that's how you, when you look back on this run, they're just not making mistakes and they're executing properly on both sides of the ball. So mm. the Niners is just a little too problematic for me. You know, I do think the Niners are the more talented team, but I'm trusting the better coaching staff, better quarterback, and you know, just them being disciplined. And uh, when it comes to MVP, I'm going to go boring Mahomes, but I would not rule out Chris Jones because the Niners are very. I don't want to say below average, but just they're they're not great at pass protecting, particularly their guards. And you saw the Lions and the Packers to some extent really just push the pocket. And I know Chris Jones kind of lines up the edge sometimes, but I could see Chris Jones just going off in this one. So if if you want to get a little uh, a little unexpected, like if someone you look at the odds, I would say take a chance with Chris Jones because you never know a three sack game could go a long way. So if it's not going to be Mahomes, watch out for Chris Jones. Alan's going to get a kick out of this because Alan and my dad, uh, they got a, my, my dad fucks with Alan. He, he he loves Alan. They talk soccer all the time together. Yo, Alan, he called me earlier this week and he's like, yo, Carl Laftis is winning MVP. And I go, why? He goes, we've never had a Greek in the Super Bowl. And I was like, bro, he played last year. He goes, yeah, but now he's seasoned. And I was like, okay. So my dad put $50. Hey, I love his sack season, man. Yo, my dad put 50, he sent me $50. And uh, we got Carl Laftis at 105 to 1 to win MVP. And the handicap, he's Greek. That's it. That's, that's the, the, only, only, that's the only thing you got. Take that. You don't get that shit anywhere else on the planet. That's a grade A handicapping. The dude is Greek. We're Greek. Old Dirt McGirt. Lamb show. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it, bro. Carl Laftis. 105 to we 1. We need a Chris Jones strip sack. And Carl Laftis just takes it to the house from the yard. <laughs> Yo. Laftis. Yeah. I, just, I hope your dad just has the time of his life to have that. 
Dude, he'll probably get on a flight the next day and be like, I need my money cash from William Hill. That's what he would do. Oh, man. That was good. That was a good way to end it. Alan, thanks uh, thanks for joining in. Thanks for calling in, I should say. Um, appreciate you, man. Appreciate you always. Cool. And uh, these are always fun. And, and sorry for making you wait. We just had a... Uh, it's been crazy, dude. Um, it's been crazy being in Vegas. Uh, I'll send you a picture after we finish recording. Um, I had a... <laughs> I had the biggest guest of all time on the show. Um, and then, you know, just we're supposed to have Bill Krakenberger on, and then he shows up with Warren Sharp also. And you're like, what the hell? I, I read this dude's book every fucking year. And, like, I don't come off as a reader. I'm what? definitely not anyone that knows this. So, like, we get a lot of crazy shit going on here, man. But I, I have to make time for you to come on the show. Absolutely. Now, Warren Sharp's one of the best analytical minds in the game. So, any to learn from him, you got to take it. Let the people know where they can find you, bro. Alan Sturk, A-L-L-E-N-S-T-R-K. At Nick Day is 10, as you can find me. All things Veterans Minimum are at Veterans Minimum. This amazing helmet right over here can be yours. For as little as $10 pledged to the Patreon, you'll be eligible to win it. Um, it's a drawing. Not everyone's going to get one, right? Because it could come off as, like, everyone's going to get yes, one. Uh, we're just going to draw that on air, right? Yeah, we'll do that like on air. Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll put it in a fishbowl and... Someone will get that. So patreon.com slash veterans minimum. Josh, where can they find you? The American Fan 365. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Oh. Randall Cunningham episode. Make sure you go check it out. Oh, nice. Yeah, you yeah. actually recorded it. I did. Yeah, you do listen. <laughs> I, tell, I tell them all the time, That's Alan. I'm here right there. Yeah, it is. And I, I tell them all the time. I'm like, yo, bro, cardinal sin that I see content creators do. Don't mention who you have on the show until you finish recording it. With that said, the bars are free. Just subscribe to the episode, and we'll catch you guys next time. In his element, I'm a gold medalist. Bronze like your medalist. So many deer in headlights, but it's bedtime. Hear that supper bell, main course, beat of venison. Zab. Most dangerous game. Either kill or be